Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about DNA versus RNA, purines versus pyrimidines, nucleosides versus nucleotides. We talked about DNA replication and DNA repair. Today, we'll take it to the next level. We'll talk about recombinant DNA technology. We'll talk about PCR, DNA sequencing, DNA libraries, and even knockout mice. So let's get started. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order. In this video, we will review important points from previous biochemistry videos. We'll talk about recombinant DNA technology, DNA libraries, hybridization, PCR, DNA gel electrophoresis, and I'll tell you the difference between southern blot, northern blot, and western blot. We will talk about DNA sequencing, we will discuss gene therapy, and we'll talk about transgenic versus knockout mice. Quick review, the central dogma is to take that DNA and then copy it, it's called replication. Or you can convert it to RNA, transcription. Then you translate it into meaningful proteins. Most of your DNA is in the nucleus. Don't forget that my DNA is a double helix. It's polar, anti-parallel, the bases are on the inside, but the sugar phosphate backbone is on the outside. There is complementary base pairing, A binds with T and C binds with G. Adenine binds thymine with two hydrogen bonds, but guanine binds with cytosine via three hydrogen bonds. That's why the GC couple is more stable than AT pairing. Remember, JC stability. We talked about DNA replication in previous videos. Just remember that the first step is adding a primer which is a short RNA sequence. What's the enzyme that adds a primer? Primase. Today's topic, recombinant DNA technology. What's that? Basically, we are multiplying the DNA of interest, as many copies as you want. How do you do it? Gene cloning or polymerase chain reaction? Why should I multiply the DNA of interest? because we can use this to diagnose genetic diseases, predict many diseases even in the womb, paternity test, who's your daddy, criminology, who's the perpetrator, and gene therapy. Of course, you know that bacteria and viruses are rapidly dividing. Therefore, let's actually use them to clone and multiply the DNA of interest. Okay, sounds good. Ligate the DNA of interest into a vector. Who's the vector? the plasmid of a bacteria or a virus. Okay, this vector is a nucleic acid piece. Add to that the DNA of interest and before you know it, DNA plus vector equals recombinant vector. Nucleic acids contain what? Genes. The bacteria and viral plasmids will replicate and those genes will code for proteins. What do you call them? Recombinant proteins in huge abundance. But hey, medicosis. Not all of these bacteria are useful to the test. Not all of them are going to carry the recombinant vector. What should we do with the bacterial colonies that do not carry the recombinant vector? We'll destroy them. Hashtag selective killing. How do you destroy these bacteria? You add a gene for antibiotic resistance. Therefore, the only bacteria that survive are the bacteria carrying recombinant vector. Those who do not will be forced to leave the chat. After identifying the sequence of the DNA of interest, it's time to add restriction endonuclease enzymes, also known as restriction enzymes. What are they? They are palindromic. What does that mean? It means identical and anti-parallel. Example, suppose that one strand is 5 prime G A T C and then 3 prime. What's the other one? Well, anti-parallel, 5 prime, and then G, A, T, C, 3 prime. Identical and anti-parallel. Hashtag palindromic. What do they do? Well, they are endonucleases. They will recognize a specific sequence on your double-stranded DNA, which is a nucleic acid, and then it will restrict, i.e. cut through the double helix, 
until we give you the DNA of interest, the sequence that you want to multiply. DNA libraries, copies of DNA that are ready to use, just like grabbing the desired book off the shelf. And we have two types, genomic versus complementary, or cDNA. Complementary, C, DNA, complementary DNA library. The genomic one came straight of your genome, i.e. from your chromosome, which means it's going to contain introns and exons. In the next videos, we'll talk about the fact that introns are not coding. Introns interfere with our job. However, exons express the actual function. So introns are the bad guy because they intervene, but exons are the good guy. Now look at those cDNA libraries. They only contain exons, only the good guys. And that's why the complementary DNA library can produce recombinant proteins, can be used in gene therapy, can reliably identify disease-causing mutations, can reliably sequence specific genes, because they are only exons, and they can construct transgenic animals like transgenic mice, which we'll talk about soon. But look at the genomic ones, the ones that have the bad guys. We cannot produce recombinant proteins like insulin. We cannot be used in gene therapy. We cannot reliably identify a disease causing mutations. We cannot reliably sequence specific genes. And we cannot construct transgenic animals. How did we make genomic DNA libraries? Well, they are genomic, just like you make any DNA. Restriction endonuclease, get me the sequence that I want and then DNA ligase to seal in the gaps. But the cDNA is mRNA. How do you go from RNA to DNA reverse transcriptase? Don't forget to seal in the gap with DNA ligase. Promoter and enhancer are present in genomic, but not in complementary. And this is the complementary expressive DNA library. The clone genes are complete sequence. Next, hybridization. To hybridize is to join two things together. Two or more, of course. What are we joining, please? Two complementary base pairing sequence. Could be between DNA and DNA. We call this the southern blot. Or DNA and RNA. We call this the northern blot. Mnemonic time. You put the DNA in the center. Okay. And if you go up, you are rising. Rising to meet what? RNA. If you're rising, you go to the north, northern blot. Conversely, if you start with DNA and pair it with DNA, you are descending into chaos. This is called southern blot. So we have northern blot, DNA with RNA. And we have southern blot, DNA with another DNA. One is known, one is unknown. The known one is called DNA probe. Do we have any other blots? Yeah, we have Western blot. DNA with proteins. Mnemonic Washington Post. WP Washington Post, which is a Western newspaper, of course. Some Jeff Bezos action. Do you remember my previous videos? What is denaturation? Denaturation is to split the double helix into two separate strands. And you can do this by heating. But if you cool the DNA, it will rejoin, i.e. re-anneal, back to the double helix. It's the tale of two opposites. Heating versus cooling. Denaturation versus re-annealing. PCR time. Again, we multiply the DNA of interest. PCR can give you millions of copies without even amplifying the DNA of the bacteria. Requirements for PCR. We need a primer, we need nucleotides, we need DNA polymerase, and we need heat for denaturation, followed by cooling for re-annealing. Primer. What's the primer? Short RNA sequence, about 10 nucleotides or so. This RNA has to be complementary to the DNA of interest. The primer has high JC content. And guess what? JC stability. That's why we need a primer. Next, nucleotide, i.e. deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, such as DATP, deoxyadenosine triphosphate, and DCTP, DGTB, DTTP, etc. We need DNA polymerase from humans, right? Shut up. The human DNA polymerase cannot work. Why? Because we're going to heat, and this 
human DNA polymerase cannot work at high temperature. Instead, we will use the DNA polymerase of Thermus aquaticus. It's a bacteria that can survive very high temperature. It even survives inside hot springs of the Yellowstone National Park. Thermus aquaticus can survive 70 degrees Celsius. Wow! Next, you heat to separate, then you cool to rejoin. This is a cycle. Each time you do the cycle, you double the amount of DNA. Please remember that my DNA is negatively charged. Why? Because the phosphate is negatively charged. And if you watched my previous video on electrophoresis in this biochemistry playlist, I've told you that electrophoresis means electrical separation. We separate different molecules based on their size and their charge. If you are positively charged, you will be attracted to the negative electrode, i.e. the cathode. But if you are negatively charged, like DNA, you will be attracted to the positive electrode which is the anode. Moreover, small particles travel faster than large particles. Of course, it's just common sense. Chubby people take longer. Bad joke. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you remember your electrophoresis. What's the name of the gel that we used for protein electrophoresis? It was called the polyacrylamide gel. That's why we called it polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis or PAGE. But today we're talking about a different type of electrophoresis, not protein electrophoresis, but rather DNA electrophoresis. What kind of gel are we using? Agarose gel. So for the protein electrophoresis, polyacrylamide gel. But for DNA electrophoresis, agarose gel. Remember that my DNA is negatively charged. If I am negatively charged, I'll be attracted towards the positive electrode, i.e. the anode. And I will keep traveling and traveling and traveling, migrating and migrating and migrating from the cathode towards the anode, from the negative electrode towards the positive electrode. And the longer the DNA strand, the slower it migrates, i.e. the lower the migration velocity and vice versa. Using this technique, you will try to find the DNA that is unknown, because the unknown will pair with the known. Hashtag southern blot DNA with DNA. The known is the probe, the unknown is the DNA of interest. How did we do this? We separated them electrically by size and charge. Then we paired the nitrogenous bases together. See, biochemistry makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Next, DNA sequencing. Very similar. What do you want? I want a primer. I want nucleotides. I want DNA polymerase. And this is what's unique about DNA sequencing. I want a modified base. What do you mean? Not just deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, but dideoxyribo. Twice? Yeah. What do you mean? Look at the DATP, DCTP, etc. All of them had OH group at the carbon 3' prime of the sugar. But I am dideoxy. I want you to remove another oxygen. Okay, we will remove another oxygen and you will be left with this. That's why it's called dideoxy. Please recall that the first oxygen was removed from 2' prime carbon. This will give me DATP, for example. Then the second oxygen was removed from the 3' prime carbon, and this will give me dideoxy ATP. Why should I care about all of this? Because once you insert a modified base, it's like throwing a wrench in the works. It will ruin everything. Now DNA polymerase will have nothing to do with us because DNA can no longer add further nucleotides to the chain once you added this piece of garbage. Look at those double Ds. They are big problems. They are modified and they stop the work. Next, gene therapy. What is it? Treatment of human disease. How? By transferring genetic material into specific cell of interest. Why? to modify or correct the defective or abnormal gene or DNA. Example, 
Patients who have SCID, severe combined immunodeficiency, usually have defective gamma chain of some of the interleukin receptors. We can use gene therapy to introduce the correct gamma chain by inserting the correct gene, usually transferred via a modified virus called the vector, because the virus, by definition, is trying to invade your cell. And this modified virus will take the correct copy and insert it instead of the bad copy. That's the good news, is that it can help treat SCID. The bad news is, in some, but not all cases, gene therapy can activate oncogenes, what are oncogenes? Genes that cause genesis of oncology, i.e. cancer, such as leukemia. But SCID is not the only application for gene therapy. There are gazillion diseases that can benefit from gene therapy. Each one has its own defect and therefore the target cell is different. Next, let's talk about mice. Transgenic mice versus knockout mice. These are genetically modified mice. In transgenic, we added something. What did you add? A transgene. But in knockout mice, we knocked out a gene. We deleted a gene. When we delete a gene, the mice become abnormal so that we can study them. But in transgenic, we added a transgene. What the flip is a transgene? Well, it's a gene. No kidding. That is added, i.e. transferred, into the ovum or the zygote of the mouse during embryogenesis. Some of these are disease producing, others are not disease producing. So you can study the difference between the genes that cause disease versus genes that do not cause disease. If they cause disease, you can study the disease, such as the symptoms, the duration, the risk factors, precipitating factors, treatment, etc. And since we're talking about embryogenesis, not just the mouse will get sick, the offsprings will get sick as well because it's a genetic disease. The problem with this technique is that you cannot control the number of copies of the inserted gene. But this can be helpful in studying dominant genes. Because remember, in autosomal dominant diseases, you only need one bad copy to become sick. So you only need one bad transgene to cause the disease. So dominant diseases can be studied. But in recessive diseases, remember, both copies had to be abnormal so that I suffer the disease. And since I cannot control the number of copies, I won't be able to study recessive diseases or recessive genes. Next, we can make chimera. I just remember the bicameral congress, a congress that is made of more than one piece, the House and the Senate. Similarly, chimera is made of two or more cell lines, like patches, like having one factory producing Honda cars, Toyota cars, Ford cars, and God help you, Chevrolet cars. I'm just joking. My friend has a Chevrolet and he likes it. So when we have multiple cell lines, we call this chimera. One cell line could be the original, the other could be transgenic. And then we can make homozygous or heterozygous mice. And then we can study them. Please remember, which DNA library can be used to construct transgenic mice, only the complementary or C DNA or expressive DNA libraries. Remember, only the complementary can construct transgenic mice, not the genomic, because the genomic has introns. Yikes. If you would like to learn more about oncology, i.e. cancer, and anti-cancer pharmacology agents, their mechanisms, their side effects, their clinical uses, etc., download my anti-cancer pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. To learn how your kidneys work, download my renal physiology course. To learn about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, download my general pharmacology course. In the next video, we'll talk about RNA and transcription. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.